Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna work on creating hinges for some of these pages. Um, I have The Littlest Angel, which is a pretty good sized book. The pages are large, and so that means that you're not gonna be able to use a standard 12 by 12 and fold it in half or eight and a half by 11 because these pages are actually eight and a half by 11 as they stand and so when you take your standard size sheet of paper and fold it in half you're not going to be able to cover the whole space so today i'm going to work on extending some pages and making them wide enough to fit this journal and then also i'm going to show you how i reinforce pages where the uh where the fold might be weak or in this case i cut through the page when I was taking it out of the book. So that was unfortunate, but we need to strengthen these pages here and make new hinges so that when I sew it together, the book stays together. And I've got a couple different ways I'm gonna show you how I did that. But first, I wanted to show you how this turned out. This was our uh, decoupaging from Wednesday's video. And I don't know if you can tell let me stand up and see if I can capture the sparkle. It's very faint. You can see it better in real life than what I can capture here on camera. But there is some sparkle in there. You kind of see it like through here. So it did exactly what I wanted it to do when I sealed it up. And so it's got just the right amount of sparkle on it. Here's the back side. And again, we're going to be running fabric up the side here. So some of this will get covered up. And then um, once it's all put together, I think it's going to look really good. You know, it's going to look more finished. Right now it just looks still kind of junky just because it's not, it's not all put together yet. So that's how that goes. And then here are the pieces, the other pieces that I decoupaged. Here's the tree on the time card. And that's going to go with this journal here, The Littlest Angel. And then the other three where I decoupaged on the sacks. So again, you can kind of see that sparkle through there. There's one, there's two. I really like, especially this one, how it, um, it's like it melted the image into the background, but at the same time, it's got some dimension to it and it looks like it's almost 3D. It's just popping out from the back of the page, which is really cool looking. And then the last one was this one. So I am going to put some focal points on these and decorate those up a little bit more. But for today, our emphasis is going to be on working on these on these uh, hinges and reinforcing the pages. So go ahead and make yourselves comfy or get crafty, whichever you prefer, while we do our video session together. I'm going to clear this off and then we'll be right back to get to work. All right, so like I said, I have a couple of different ways that I like to do this when I'm trying to hinge two pieces of paper together or trying to reinforce a seam. You can use paper, something that coordinates or just a plain like coffee dyed and cut it in strips and then glue each half together. And I do that quite often. In fact, I do have a video out there that I made early on in this channel where I demonstrate that technique. So I'll link it up above down below and at the end, <laughs> all the places. So that is one way. For today, I have another way that I really enjoy doing even better, and that is to use fabric. So typically, um, I see people using just plain pieces of muslin or coffee dyed muslin, that kind of thing, but I really enjoy using strips of fabric that coordinate. With, with whatever project I'm working on. So in this case, I went digging through my Christmas fabrics and I found this one, I forgot I had it. So I think this will be perfect for this journal. And then I also have this one that's got a little bit of a tie-dye batik kind of feel in the background with this gold, gold swirl pattern, which I also feel like uh, ties in really nicely with that journal. To save time, I went ahead and ripped these into strips. So these are about one inch wide, and then these are uh, 11 inches tall, so I made the strips roughly 11 to 12 inches long. And so we're just gonna go through and work on these, and I'll show you how I do this. 
So this little book was kind of different the way it was put together. So it had three, this is similar to a little golden book actually. It had the three pages here and then it had the three pages at the back, but in between it also had these two pages that were just kind of hanging there loose. So I'm going to start with that one and work on uh, connecting those two pages first. I'm also going to label my, um, my parts here. So since this part will essentially be a signature and this will essentially be a signature this middle section, even though it's only one page, I will be adding other papers and stuff in with it. So it will also be a signature. So this is gonna end up being a three signature journal, but this is essentially the second signature, even though it's only gonna have one sheet from the story in it, or one, you know, one whole spread, basically. Now this is pretty simple. There's not really, not really complicated <laughs> other than figuring out if you want to use paper or fabric and then how to um what kind of fabric you want to use you know or what what pattern on your paper i am going to bring this out a little bit because it looks like yeah we're zoomed in just a teensy bit too much here we go so if you're using paper you can use any kind of glue that glues paper to paper very often I will cut it into strips and then go down the side with my uh, decorative scissors, either a zigzag or a scallop, just to keep it interesting. When you're using the fabric, you can also, uh, I tore these and made a straight edge, but you could also use your, your um, pinking shears. Mine are dusty. They've been getting some good use. Okay, so this... I want to put this on the outside, the outside section, so that when I fold it together, the fabric is on the outside edge, and no particular reason other than truly personal preference. The other thing you want to bear in mind is that when you are gluing these together, let me make sure this is actually open. I see a lid on there, a cap. It's not. <laughs> um. You don't want to put glue everywhere. You don't want it too stiff. You don't want your papers too thick because you get several layers of super thick paper and then they're very hard to sew together. So we're just going to run some glue, hopefully, down either side. Now I usually use Fabri-Tac. My Fabri-Tac is getting low. So on this one I'm using the foam and poster board adhesive. And it looks like... Yeah, no, it's open. Okay. I was wondering if the nozzle needed to be cut, but it doesn't. But I, this is from the Dollar Tree and it works just as well on the fabrics. If I can get the glue to come out. Why aren't you coming out? Because they're still, there we go. <laughs> Cause there was still some plastic on there, okay. She can be taught, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, she can. Okay. So we're just gonna run our glue down the edges and covering about a half an inch on each side. And just like, just like you do when your book is all folded together, this giant sheet of paper, I'm not gonna leave really any space between them because the fold is gonna happen with the fabric, just as it would have with the sheet of paper. So there we go. Lay it on there, smooth it out. And you just wanna make sure that it's centered and it looks like it mostly is. So really the only thing is just to keep in mind the thickness of the fabric or whatever paper you're hinging it with because you are going to have to sew through all those layers when you sew your book together. And then either at this point you can trim it trim the edges or you can wait till it dries. So I just trim them pretty close, not completely flush with the edge because then that allows this to fray a little bit and then when you get all those put together in your journal, it just adds a really nice texture to each page. Okay, now this stuff 
is very aromatic. <laughs> it's pretty strong, so make sure that you're, if you need some ventilation, that you use it because it's, it's uh, very strong, very potent. Okay, I'm gonna leave that out for a minute to dry a little bit more. So on this one, I'm gonna use the angel fabric. And again, I'm gonna come at it from the outside edge where the fold would be. Isn't that pretty? I found this at Hobby Lobby, but it's been a couple of years ago, so I don't know if they still have it or not. And I, I went looking specifically because I know, I knew that I was gonna have journals I wanted to make with religious, you know, nativity themed journals. And so I was trying to find something that would go with a spiritual, spiritual emphasis on a Christmas journal. And I found these angels, and I think they're really cute. This, this particular pattern is not so uh, cutesy, you know? I'm not, I'm not a fan of the cutesy stuff, I'm just not. Okay, so there's that one. Yeah, this has kind of the fragrance of um, like if you were to use a spray glue or something, it kind of smells like that. Now, if you're afraid about getting your pages out of order, I would recommend that you go through and number them. I'm not necessarily afraid, but I'll show you. One, two, am I even in print? Yeah, I am, okay. Three, four, very lightly, because then later you're gonna go back and erase them. Five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So there's page one, and because because this is split right here, and I just really want to make sure it's reinforced. I think I want to grab some washi tape. All right, so I pulled out these washi tapes here. Um, I've had all of these for a while from various sources. I don't have a ton of washi tape, and I don't know if you could even find these now. I don't even remember when I bought this, probably a couple of years ago again. But I like the plaid. Always gonna, you're always gonna win my heart when there's plaid. <laughs> there's that, okay. I think on this one, I do like this red and green plaid, and we've got a green and red harp there. So as always, you want to reinforce the washi tape. So you can run a line of liquid glue or your glue stick. Oh, oh, well that's interesting. Maybe I don't need to. I'm gonna do it anyway. I just like the certainty of it. Now this, since I'm reinforcing where I cut, that's not going to um, be in the way of the hinge, so I won't. I don't have to worry about there being a double thickness where I'm going to sew. Which, trust me, after doing this a few times, you start realizing that you don't want to make more work for yourself. <laughs> okay, so, just going to run it right along the edge there, and then that will help that page stay together. And I like this trick where you use the credit card and just, you know, tear it. It's not a credit card, it's a, one of those eating rewards cards from a place I've not been to for I don't know how long. But they have multiple uses. They act as scrapers and all kinds of good things. Case in point, look at that. Okay, so just like that, we've got our page reinforced, okay. So that was page one. Let's get our other guys out here. I grabbed out some flowers while I was looking for the washi tape, and I think these will actually, these might make a really nice embellishment for this book. Very cute. It's funny how you see something and you just ignore it, and then you see it again in a different context or in relation to something else, and suddenly it seems like the right thing. Okay, so here we go again. 
And let's see, we had angels on that. Let's alternate. So I'm gonna do angel, swirlies, angels, and then we'll see how it looks on the third, third um, signature. I got my papers cut down, the big ones that we picked out a couple of sessions ago. So those, those have been cut down to fit. So now I just need to organize the order after I get all of these hinged together. It'll be a lot easier for me to assemble my signatures. Tell you what, you're in danger of getting high with this stuff. <laughs> I don't say that lightly either. Ventilation, very important. Okay, we're gonna set that one aside. Now we're gonna do this one. I think maybe for Christmas Eve, we should be done with the story of the other wise man. I may sit down and read this story just for a little Christmas Eve fun for all of you, so. I'm really getting into the reading out loud. It's been nice. Nice to read a story. Okay, we're angels again. Oops. Look at these guys with their long beards. <laughs> so cute. From that moment on, the heavenly peace was never quite the same. <laughs> So cute. Okay, now I can feel the glue coming through the fabric onto my fingers. So we're going to wipe up a little bit. It does kind of um, gum up like a rubber eraser. That's one nice thing about these beacon glues is they you get a little too much, you can just rub it off. And I could be saving all those little scraps, but there is literally no point. I don't feel like drowning in scraps today. Okay, so that's signature one. I'm gonna set it over here. And then we're gonna do the last signature. Where is it? Where did I put it? Oh, golly, I lost it. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Signature three. And then I will go on and show you the second way that I like to hinge pages. Okay, so. I'm going to do angels again. I think that we're going to be glad that this has this little bit of reinforcement when we're all done. And it'll just add a little bit to the character of the book too. You know, each book, for me anyway, kind of gets its own personality or its own like flavor kind of. And uh, it's really fun to watch it develop as you work through the journal. Now there is a piece right there. I want that to lay down. So I told you I had a busy week, and so today, let's see, we had took the dog to the groomer on Tuesday. Yesterday I had my massage, and I've been doing that um, regularly. I mean, I'd, I've gone off and on for a while, but regularly I've been doing it since, really since COVID started, but it's a nice way to make sure that your system is getting cleaned out. So if you know anything about your glandular system, I don't know all the technical words, but anyway, your lymph nodes collect all the junk in your system, like when you have a cold or whatever, but they don't ever release it. So you have to manipulate your lymph nodes by either massaging them, that's a whole thing you can read up on, dry, uh, dry brushing for your lymph nodes, or Take a brisk 10, 10 to 20 minute walk every day will help keep them clear so that you don't get more sick or go get a massage. 
And I'm, I'm also doing the massage just for like circulation in my feet and stuff like that. So I think it's money well spent. It's cheaper than going to the doctor. And I go about every six weeks, so it's not like, not like I'm spending a ton. There we go. That's probably more than you wanted to know, but I'm, I'm, it sounds kind of frou-frou, you know, be like, oh, I go get my massage, but I, it's for really good health reasons. <laughs> so it's all part of basic self-care. Gotta take care of yourself. I'm really realizing as I'm getting older that your body was designed to just, I mean, if you take care of it, your body can go for a very long time. And, um... So if you want to have that, oh, oh, that's the one I already did. If you want to have that mobility and elasticity and stuff, you're not going to wear it out by by um, using using your muscles and everything. So I think that's been kind of a game changer for me to realize that you don't have to get old and creaky and stiff. That you can stay mobile and fluid and and flexible, and it's really good for you. Um, what else? So, yeah, tonight I'm going to go and do the slides. Go to rehearsal for slides for Sunday. And then Sunday I have slides. And this morning I got my hair. And tomorrow is, tomorrow night is our crafty get-together that I started. I didn't get to go last month because that was the day we were leaving town. So I put someone else in charge of opening and closing the building for me. And, uh... So we'll see how many people we get. It's been a real slow start because for whatever reason, my church doesn't like to put things in the bulletin. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. I don't want to micromanage people. I don't want to be like having to call them every month or send out monthly emails to say, hey, come to our craft night. I think you're like, I gave everyone a schedule and they can write it on their calendar. <laughs> I actually, I put it on my calendar for the, you know, I started this in September. So I put it on for finishing out this year and then all of next year. And then I'll reassess and see if it's still worth, still worth doing. But it's still picking up speed right now. So, okay, so there's those three. And I don't think that those are so wet that they'll stick together. So we'll, good thing I numbered them. I want to put these in a different spot though. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Only I didn't number that one, did I? <laughs> Whoops. I'll just have to read the story and put it all back in order. That'll be fun. Okay, so the second way that I like to hinge things, um, well, the third way, I guess I told you about the first way, that was the second way. This way, what I did here was I got out some 12 by 12s and you saw me go through and pick book pages. So let me show you at this one first, it'll be easier to explain. So what I did, here's the book page, which is roughly an eight and a half by 11 or so. This one's a little narrower. And then I trimmed this 12 by 12 piece. I trimmed it down. So this is eight and a half by 11, but I added another um, inch right here. I think it was an inch or maybe inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, just to make sure I had enough. So I, add, I extended this past the eight and a half, another inch and a quarter, so uh, nine and three quarters. You could probably get away with just a half an inch, but I like to have lots of room to work. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to just use this tab that I folded over, the excess, and we're gonna glue this to it, and that makes the hinge right here. Now, uh, you can use wet glue or you can use um, the tape, but I didn't bring over my tape, so we're just going to keep going with the wet glue. And you don't have to use the fabric glue, it's just what I have here. So this will give you a nice... It gives you a nice overlap so that your pages, your pages fit together very nicely. And let's see, let's grab this guy. 
smoosh it out. Okay, so it looks like this book page was a little taller than the 11, so I'll trim that off later. I got glue smooshing out everywhere. It's almost better if I don't use a wet rag on it. I'm wasting time here, I'm trying to get my glue off my mat, but I don't want something else to stick in it. Okay, so then you have your page like this. So if it's a little off, you can always go back and just trim it up. So there's that one. And then what I thought I would do, you can either run your washi. Let's see, I want something with some blue. I don't have blue washi tape really much. That looks like Christmas, and that's the wrong shade of blue. So this one's a narrow washi tape, and if you want to just make this pretty, you can run washi tape, or you can run a strip of fabric, or um, like a trim, like um, Rick Rack, or a piece of lace, or whatever you want to do. Oops, okay, these are all doing that. That's interesting. I've never actually, a lot of my washi tapes were the ones that Michael's had for a while in their cheap spot, so they're not the highest quality. <laughs> But these were the ones that they actually they actually sold in the in the sets. I don't even know if I got glue on there. Can't tell. Did I get glue in there? Not really. Sorry if my head is in the way. Can't see. Come on. It's not coming out, but I don't want it out so much that it that it just squeezes out everywhere. There you go. So that just makes a nice, really pretty decoration on that page. And then you have a page that's wide enough to fit in the book. Okay, here's our book cover. And this will fit right in there probably end up trimming off this piece a little bit but that's okay I'd like I would prefer to leave myself a little room and do some trimming down than to have it be too short you know okay so there's that one I'm gonna leave it open to dry it's got some glue there too okay now on this one so the idea is essentially the same but what I did was I trimmed down the book page I just folded the book page over because it was too wide and so I'm attaching this piece of cardstock to the book page instead. I'm really excited to put this book together. There, um, I had debated about getting some matching cardstock and sewing it together and extending the pages that way. So I'll have to see what I've got and see if that's something I want to do or not. Once I've got all these pieces put together, see how it all, all um, lays, you know, how it, how it all goes together, all the different parts, and then decide if that's what I want to do. Okay, I want, I think I want plaid. Mad for plaid. This one is from the Dollar Tree, and I know this because it has kind of a plasticky feel to it. So it's not, it's not quite as papery as your standard washi tape, but it works really well. I've really enjoyed it. And again, I've had this one for a little while. I don't know if they would have it there right now if you went. Speaking of things that are plasticky, so I was looking for some extra papers and I went to Michael's to get papers for, um, to see what I could find. And I came back with this one for the little lost angel. But this stuff, I don't know what they've done, but this definitely does not feel like paper fiber. It feels like plastic, so I don't know. And it's the Recollections brand, so I don't know if they're trying to save money by making plastic paper and passing it off in their scrapbook section, but I didn't, I liked the pattern, but I'm not particularly keen on the texture. Okay, there's that one. Now we're gonna do this one. Some of these that I folded over came out of 
existing paper pads. Actually, all of these. And then here's that one that I had stamped on. Remember that one? But look how it ties in with these cute trees. So cute. Okay, so that one, I don't need to go all the way over. So that is essentially how I go through and hinge my pages. And on this one, it is necessary just because the book is oversized, so you have to have a way for your papers to fit, you know? Because not a lot of paper is not big enough or wide enough to go in an oversized book, so. Let's see, which one shall we use this time? Shall we use the Hollies? Let's do. It also has the added benefit that it kind of reinforces the seam a little bit. So, you know me, I like to be good and sure that nothing's falling apart. Isn't that pretty? Stay there, stay there. Oh, that's not straight now. I moved it. Ah. Is that straight? Okay, there we go. There we go. And it is as simple as that. And rub off all the excess. That is one nice thing about these beacon glues. I have a couple other brands that do that too. And let's see, do we have time for this last one? We do. So this one is just two pieces of scrap of paper. Heavier, a little bit thicker, like cardstock. So. They don't look like they really go together when they're side by side, but once they're in the book, you won't know because they'll be on opposite sides of the signature, so it won't matter. And actually, if I was really smart, I would do it so that this made the made the pretty pattern on that side, but I'm not doing it that way. <laughs> so I'm gonna have all the pattern on one side and all the white white side on the other side. And this one, because this is exactly eight and a half and eight and a half, I'm bumping it up against the crease here. And I want my page to be straight, so. So on the other ones, I didn't do that because the page I was attaching was not as wide as this page, but this one is, so. Let's see, who's left? How about this one? Actually, I could do this one. It's got some turquoise, and there is quite a bit of turquoisey color in the story. So let me bring it down here where I can see. And uh, we'll put on our coordinating trim, coordinating washi. Yeah, so that's that. It's not. Not super involved video today, but it's giving me a chance to work on it. Tomorrow night, at my craft book night, I have um, a project I want to work on, and I saw it a little while ago, so I've just been waiting, <laughs> waiting for Friday night to, um, to work on it. But it's a certain kind of folio, but it's not as involved as some of the others. And so I'm wanting to, it's a nice simple project I can work on and make myself an idea or two. And then also, well, I've just been doing all kinds of stuff, but I joined a swap with a channel called Oak House Journals, and there was a tag, tag swap. So I joined that, so I have two partners I'm swapping with. I need to make Christmas tags for them and get those out in the next couple of weeks. And then um, Pam Van E is running her 3K uh, subby giveaway. And so I need to make a piece of ephemera and send to her very soon. We have till the end of the month, so I'm going to work on that, Pam. I'm going to be sending you something now that I'm back from all my, all my cavorting around the world. 
Okay, so yeah, and this will need to be trimmed down a little bit, but look at that. So that, that's how we do that. It is that easy, folks, that easy. So I hope that was uh, informative for you and gave you some ideas. And then as I go through and assemble things, if I need any more reinforcing, I know there's like a couple music sheets that I'd pulled out and stuff. I still have two strips left I can do that with. So let's, let's see what we got here. Got this and this and this. I just love these boxes. It just reminds me of the little box that the little angel the little angel gives to the Christ child with his treasures, his treasures that he had on earth. It's just the sweetest story. Okay, so here's signature one. This should be dry. One, two, three. So now we just fold them up. And then the other two signatures are over on my desk, so I'll probably just let them stay there for the moment. And then we're going to clear this up. And we're going to read. I wonder if this should be my photo for my... The photo for my um, thumbnail. What do you think? Should that be the photo? Maybe it will be. All right, I will clean this up and I'll be right back with, with our reading. I just put this here so you could have something beautiful to look at while I talk. So before I read, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. I told you that I've been involved in a lot of different little projects here lately. So the one was the tag swap and the other one is I'm going to enter Pam's giveaway. But lastly, I got invited to participate in a collaboration that's a the lady is calling a digital advent and she approached me uh, through my Etsy shop and asked me if I wanted to be part of this and it could be a I just needed to make a printable it could be a printable that I already had or a printable that I wanted to develop so what I did was I went ahead and scanned the ephemera the vintage postcards and things that I had pulled out to put in these books and I went ahead and scanned it and added in some other things and I created a printable I'm calling it winter wishes and it's in colors of like blues and grays and things so I put that all together and I just got that all done last night and sent off so I haven't had a chance to check my emails yet today to see uh, what she said I ended up having to ask my daughter to figure out how to <laughs> how to get it out there on Google Docs so that people could print it off and so that it was um, a viable product. But now that my daughter has walked me through that, I am also going to have it available in my Etsy shop. So what this is, I, I um, requested that I mention this on my channel, so I'll be mentioning it a couple of times. But it is a digital event where 24 different makers get together and each day a different type of printable or um, something that you can download and print is released during December 1 through 24 and I am number 23 so I'm towards the end <laughs> um, the overall value of all of the printables combined is over $90 but it will be selling for $14.95. Now I believe that she has a pre-sale link out there. I'm still a little fuzzy on all of the all of the details, but it's been been released for pre-sale and I will try to figure out how to get that link and I will link it below. I don't know if she's sent me that yet or not because I emailed her pretty late last night after I had my project all done. But then it, it will um, sell for $14.95 and you get all of these different kinds of printables. And I went out and looked at some of them. So they're not all Christmas. There's just all kinds of different things and labels and um, different projects. Um, mine's pretty basic because I am not a digital creator <laughs> by any means. But I can scan things and turn them into PDFs. <laughs> so that's my speed. But I think, I think my printable turned out really cute. And so I will, if I have the link, I will link it below. But if not, beginning December 1st, I'll be linking it in my video so that you guys can go out and start um, and join if you want to join. Now, I did sign up to be an affiliate, so I will get a small commission for everyone that sells through my 
link, but you guys are under no obligation to go out there and buy. It's just a fun product, a uh, fun project. Helps me get my name out there a little bit. Gives me just a different kind of experience, um, something that I've not really tried much before, but it also helped me to get uh, a bunch of these different items that I've been wanting to scan and put in my shop as printables. It got it gave me that uh, impetus to go ahead and, and put those together. So I will have the actual kit itself in my shop and it's um, three pages and then there will be a bonus page. But I don't wanna try to upsell her product because hers is a collaboration of all these people and it's it's a really good value so if printables are something that you enjoy doing um keep an eye out for that link in the upcoming videos and um it's already on sale now but it doesn't the whole uh conglomeration the whole package doesn't get released until december 1st so i'll um i'll put that link down below if i have it okay but i do want to mention that it's pretty exciting and um I like how my I like how my printables turned out. They're very cute. And now I'm going to clear this away and we'll we'll read our story. Okay, so we didn't quite make it to the end of the section. I had hoped we would, but we didn't. So last time it was describing his ride, Artiban's ride, as he was trying to get to meet the other three wise men or magi. And he's going through, he's like about three hours out from on the 10th day trying to reach these guys and he's going through a date palm grove it's dark and his horse slows down she's starting to pick her way through and she seems pretty worried about something and then she stops and it says before a dark object in the shadow of the last palm tree so now we're going to find out what's happening here Artiban dismounted the dim starlight revealed the form of a man lying across the road. His humble dress and the outline of his haggard face showed that he was probably one of the poor Hebrew exiles who still dwelt in great numbers in the vicinity. His pallid skin, dry and yellow as parchment, bore the mark of the deadly fever which ravaged the marshlands in autumn. The chill of death was on his lean hand, and as Artiban released it, the arm fell back inertly upon the motionless breast. He turned away with a thought of pity, consigning the body to that strange burial which the Magians deemed most fitting, the funeral of the desert, from which the kites and vultures rise on dark wings and the beasts of prey slink furtively away, leaving only a heap of white bones in the sand. But as he turned, a long, faint, ghostly sigh came from the man's lips. The brown, bony fingers closed convulsively on the hem of the Magian's robe and held him fast. Artiban's heart leapt to his throat, not with fear, but with a dumb resentment at the importunity of this blind delay. How could he stay here in the darkness to minister to a dying stranger? What claim had this unknown fragment of human life upon his compassion or his service? If he lingered but for an hour, he could hardly reach Borsippa at the appointed time. His companions would think he'd given up the journey. They would go without him. He would lose his quest. But if he went on now, the man would surely die. If he stayed, life might be restored. His spirit throbbed and fluttered with the urgency of the crisis. Should he risk the great reward of his divine faith for the sake of a single deed of human love? Should he turn aside, if only for a moment, from the following of the star to give a cup of cold water to a poor, perishing Hebrew? God of truth and purity, he prayed, direct me in the holy path, the way of wisdom which only thou knowest. Then he turned back to the sick man. Loosening the grasp of his hand, he carried him to a little mound at the foot of the palm tree. He unbound the thick folds of the turban and opened the garment above the sunken breast. He brought water from one of the small canals nearby and moistened the sufferer's brow and mouth. He mingled a draught of one of those simple but potent remedies which he carried always in his girdle, for the Magians were physicians as well as astrologers, and he poured it slowly between the colorless lips. Hour after hour he labored, as only a skillful healer of disease can do, and at last the man's strength returned. He sat up and looked about him. Who art thou, he said, in the rude dialect of the country, and why hast thou sought me here to bring back my life? I am Artaban the Magian of the city of Be Ekbatana, and I am going to Jerusalem in search of one who is to be born king of the Jews, a great prince and deliverer of all men. I dare not delay any longer upon my journey, for the caravan that has waited for me may depart without me, 
But see, here is all that I have left of bread and wine, and here is a potion of healing herbs. When thy strength is restored, thou canst find the dwellings of the Hebrews among the houses of Babylon. The Jew raised his trembling hand solemnly to heaven. Now may the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob bless and prosper the journey of the merciful and bring him in peace to his desired haven. But stay, I have nothing to give thee in return, only this, that I can tell thee where the Messiah must be sought, for our prophets have said that he should not be born in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem of, Jude of Judah. May the Lord bring thee in safety to that place, because thou hast had pity upon the sick. It was already long past midnight. Artaban rode in haste, and Vazda, restored by the brief rest, ran eagerly through the silent plain and swam the channels of the river. She put forth the remnant of her strength and fled over the ground like a gazelle. But the first beam of the sun sent her shadow before her as she entered upon the final stadium of the journey, and the eyes of Artaban, anxiously scanning the great ma mound of Nimrod and the temple of the seven spheres, could discern no trace of his friends. The many-colored terraces of black and orange and red and yellow and green and blue and white, shattered by the convulsions of nature and crumbling under the repeated blows of human violence, still glittered like a ruined rainbow in the morning light. Artaban rode swiftly around the hill. He dismounted and climbed to the highest terrace, looking out toward the west. The huge desolation of the marshes stretched away to the horizon and the border of the desert. Bitterns stood by the stagnant pools and jackals skulked through the low bushes, but there was no sign of the caravan of the wise men, far or near. At the edge of the terrace, he saw a little cairn of broken bricks, and under them a piece of parchment. He caught it up and read, We have waited past the midnight and can delay no longer. We go to find the king. Follow us across the desert. Artaban sat down upon the ground and covered his head in despair. How can I cross the desert, said he, with no food and with a spent horse? I must return to Babylon, sell my sapphire, and buy a train of camels and provision for the journey. I may never overtake my friends. Only God the merciful knows whether I shall not lose sight of the king because I tarried to show mercy. Ah, <sighs> heartbreaking, heartbreaking. It's kind of like, you know the story, but it's still, it's, it's heartbreaking. He missed, he missed his friends. So I'm gonna stop us there because that's a nice natural break. And let's see how many we have next time, okay. So next time, we'll probably get through the whole section. One, two, looks like they're getting shorter. <laughs> three, oh, three more sessions. Okay, okay, well, we're getting closer. So hopefully in about three more videos, we'll have this wrapped up. Very exciting, poor Artaban. You gotta, you gotta admire the man, but I understand his frustration for he stopped to help somebody in need, which was the right thing to do, but then he's missing his bigger quest. And so that, of course, is not, I don't want to say the point, that is the idea behind the story, right? We're seeking Jesus. What should we allow to stop us? What should we stop and pause for along that journey? Well, guys, that's it for today. So I hope until next time, you'll be inspired and do something creative today. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.